I'm, uh, I'm happy to tell you now a little bit about uh, the research that I'm doing and to describe how uh, diamonds can uh, be part of the, uh, of the quantum revolution we're living through. So what is the uh, quantum revolution? We're actually, you, you might not know it, but you're living through uh, uh, a new revolution on how quantum aspects of nature and science can start affecting our, our everyday lives. And two examples of how that could happen are related to comp computing, to how uh, quantum effects could contribute to faster and more powerful computing. The uh, essence behind this digital computing idea is that we can uh, store all information in the world by encoding it into the smallest units of information that, that we call bits, which are zeros and ones. With enough zeros and ones, we can say anything or encode anything. Now, these days, when we're entering the uh, quantum revolution, people have realized that we can extend the idea of the uh, bit of this little unit of information to a quantum bit. And a quantum bit, as opposed to this uh, uh, original standard bit, doesn't have to choose whether it's gonna be zero or one, at, it can be both zero and one at the same time. This is where we come in with our diamonds. So in, our, in my lab, we work with uh, diamonds, uh, not these very nice uh, um, uh, gems that you see on the screen. I can actually show you, I don't know if you can see this, a tiny piece of diamond that we work with. It looks very unimpressive. It's a, it's a kind of a square slab. It's slightly yellowish because it has a lot of defects in it. I'll tell you about the defects in a second. But it's still a uh, uh, very high grade diamond. The diamond is made out of a nice arrangement of carbon atoms. The little blue circles represent these carbon atoms. But nothing, no material in nature is perfect. Everything has some defect in it. And diamond is no different. So every piece of diamond is gonna have some impurity inside. For example, you could have a little nitrogen atom sitting in the lattice in a position where we should have found a carbon atom. It's an impurity. And this nitrogen atom sitting in there is actually a very common defect in diamond. This yellow slab of diamond that I showed you is yellow because it has quite a few nitrogens in it. Another very common defect that we encounter is a hole, a vacancy which is marked with this V in, in, the, uh, in the picture. Another common defect that can occur is the combination of these two. So we can have a nitrogen atom sitting in set instead of one of the carbon atoms, and then just a hole next to it. And this combination is a new type of defect with new properties, and it's called a nitrogen vacancy defect, or NV for short. And this is the defect that we are interested in because it can be quantum. What do I mean? So first of all, this defect has a property that's called spin. It's essentially a little bit like a magnetic charge. So it feels magnetic fields and reacts to them. And you can imagine it as behaving like a compass needle. So it's as if we have a tiny compass needle within our diamond, an atomic sized compass needle that will turn and react to an external magnetic field. So our NV defect is like a tiny compass needle sitting inside the diamond. But it's not a regular uh, compass needle, it's quantum. What do I mean by the fact that it's a quantum compass needle? Well, you already know, right? A quantum system can be in two places or in two states at the same time. So if I think about this spin of my NV defect, it could be pointing up or it could be pointing down, but it doesn't have to choose because it's quantum. So actually, my NV defect can be pointing bo both up and down at the same time. And this is gonna be the building block for our quantum uh, computing device. This is gonna be our quantum bit. So up is gonna be one, down is gonna be zero, and our quantum compass needle can be pointing in both directions at the same time. And this is uh, the essence of why we're interested in this defect and in diamond in general. Another thing that we're trying to, uh, to push through uh, in, in my lab, and I'll show, you, I'll show it to you in a second, 
is to try to utilize the fact that diamond is transparent. And now we can actually measure the magnetic signals, the magnetic uh, orientation of our little compass needles using light. So we're trying to build a small compact MRI sensor that's actually gonna sit at the end of a fiber like an endoscope and will allow us to go in and measure MRI signals very locally with high sensitivity in places where the regular big MRI machine can just not address or not sense. Okay, so here you can see one of our uh, experiments uh, running. And if you take a closer look, you can actually see a slab of diamond up here. This whole thing is essentially an optical microscope. It doesn't look like one, but we build them specifically for our experiments. And here we're using these uh, NVs and diamond to measure and characterize magnetic signals out of new thin magnetic materials, potentially useful for applications such as spintronics and computing, and also to characterize the magnetic or quantum properties of these NV defects. So uh, here we have a, um, an adapted setup similar to what you've seen before, but now we're trying to miniaturize everything and actually connect all of the optical components through an optical fiber with a diamond, tiny diamond at the end to realize this endoscopic uh, MRI sensor that I mentioned before. And this is a project that's uh, being funded by the uh, Israel Innovation Authority. Hopefully, we'll be able to lead into a useful device to measure MRI signals that uh, current existing MRI techniques are not sensitive enough to see. So this is my uh, outlook that I'm leaving you with. The quantum revolution is here. In the longer term, five to 10 years, we're gonna hear about huge impact coming from quantum computers that are gonna allow us to compute things that today are just impossible to realize. And potentially in the shorter term, we're gonna see quantum technologies using these uh, uh, intriguing aspects of quantum physics to enable better sensors, better MRIs, and hopefully much, much more.